Hi, I'm Steve, AD4XT, and welcome back to the channel. Let's take a look at another ladder line type antenna. This one for six meters. Stick with me. Before we get started, I do want to say that I'm fresh off of a club build myself. These antennas make great little club projects. Uh, they're simple to build in, in, in minimal materials. So uh, we did start with some plans off the internet and then we made a few changes along the line and a few mistakes. So uh, let me uh, just go ahead and build another one right here and show you what changes we made. Here is the instruction sheet that we got off the internet. Uh, you find these all over the place. I'll put a link in there. Uh, this design calls for uh, 52.3 inches of ladder line. Uh, we cut that. Uh, we found that we needed more length than that. So I'm just going to take this away because I built this thing, we tuned it, and my recipe sheet is a little bit different. We stayed with the same ladder line length okay 52 and a half inches of ladder line 450 ohm uh, 126 inches of 14 gauge wire now remember when you cut wire you've got to cut you some extra uh, to wind it back over the insulator and for adjusting uh, the difference between what we built at our, our, our build is we used RG58, I'm going to use RG8X and to wind it around about a one inch uh, core to make a choke ballon. He, I decided to cut a little piece of PVC here and uh, put a couple of holes in it and that's going to make that a little bit easier. And 41 inches of uh, RG8X so that's going to be different we used 58 but I'm going to use RG8X because that's what I have so let's get started alright let's cut the ladder line at 52 and a half All right, make sure before you cut the element wire, 126 inches, so that would be right there. That's the length of the element. You need some extra to wrap around your insulator. So shoot, give it, give it seven, eight, nine inches, doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut it at 137, just to give me a little bit to play with. I think every one of us at our build yesterday had to go back and add on more wire. and. I hate doing that. I'd rather have too much and cut some off. So give yourself some leeway. The 126 is not where you cut it. Add a little extra. I want to go ahead now and wind this RG8X uh, around this one inch PVC. Uh, I didn't have this uh, at the build. Uh, we just had to find something to wind our coax around like that and tape it down and wire tight but since I'm back at the shop I can uh, use everything that I have so I drilled two uh, quarter inch holes here in the ends so I'll feed the coax up through it again cut the coax at 41 inches that'll give me a plenty of room to uh, to wind this let's push it on through my coax measures 41 inches from from tip to the tip of this connector so I put it inside to the hole about 10 inches there so it's 10 inches to this hole, hole here and this is where I'm going to start winding it Back down the hole, if I can get that to come out, and we can. That will help secure it. Let's secure it even more. Let's see. 
one, two, three, four, five, uh, about five or six turns. And on top of that, I'm going to put some masking tape on top of it just to keep it from going crazy. You might say, why masking tape? Well, you could put electrical tape on there and that would be good. But masking tape or painter's tape doesn't stretch and it will hold it tight. And I can come across it with some electrical tape or anything else, especially if I'm going to leave it outside. So there we go. Where the coax comes out of your ballon, you want to take it just like this and strip your braid off to one side and twist it and your center connector the other way and it should look just like that. We're going to directly connect it to the ladder line. I'm not going to use any fancy connector or anything. This is the bottom of the ladder line and what I've done is just stripped off about half inch a little more of the insulation and what I'm going to do is you've got to short this in so I'm just going to push them together like this get them sized up really good and solder it and then I'm going to take my measurement that says two and a half inches and that's going to be about the connection point about in the middle of this window is two and a half inches so I'm going to take that for the mark of two and a half inches and I'm going to skin off some insulation on both sides uh, up and down that whole window because that's where we're going to attach it but we're not going to solder it until we get the antenna tuned up so let me solder this one up and and skin this back Just about like that. Got the wire exposed. Now I'm going to dig up that other side of that insulation. The insulation is stripped back and it's folded over ready to solder. Two and a half inches for the connection point will be right along here and that will give me some up and down movement for tuning. doesn't have to be real pretty just as long as it holds together this is the other end of the ladder line where the element wire of the antenna is attaching heat this thing up and put some solder to it and before I forget it let me go ahead and, and put some uh, heat shrinking I always tend to forget that Okay, now it's time to uh, put what you've uh, struck back here uh, onto the ladder line. Uh, I tried to make sure I put the uh, center connector part on the element side that has the antenna wire on it. Uh, most designs say it doesn't matter, but, but we'll go with that since this design we're using today. So I'm going to try to put it about halfway. We're not going to solder it, and then we'll, we'll go out and test it. Okay, I have the uh, center connector side on one side and the ground on the shield on the other. And uh, I put a little piece of painter's tape to remind me which side is the element side. So, I don't, you know, this, this you can get mixed up. So I'm trying to stay consistent. Don't let these squeeze together. And I'm going to take, I've just got this wrapped around here. And I'm going to take some tape and wrap around here. For some strain relief uh, while I'm testing when I when I when I get it to where I want it then I'll put some holes in it and maybe some uh, wire ties uh, for temporarily instead of an insulator I'm just making a loop in it remember our element length is 126 inches for the starting point so let's uh, and I've got a good seven inches or so of extra and on the other end, I know it. we've got the uh, PL259 connector, and uh, I like to do that. It's just easier to get you a barrel connector, and then I'll connect it to the coax. 
Uh, I've got 50 foot of RGX laid out in the yard and uh, let's pull this thing up and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, full disclaimer, I'm on my third adjustment on tuning this antenna. An analyzer comes in real handy and I'm trying to center it right there on 50.125 and I think that came out really well. That's about where I want it. And let's look at the low spot for the SWR. Okay, we're right there at 1.21. I say that's a wrap here on this one. Uh, let's go back to the table and uh, we'll talk about the three adjustments that I made. Okay, the two uh, adjustments that I made on this antenna when, with tuning. Uh, the first one was the length of the, uh, the element wire. The 14 gauge wire you know we cut it for uh, 126 inches and that was a little bit low in the band uh, so uh, I had to shorten it up to 122 and a half inches and that right there put me right on 50.125 where I want to be now the SWR wasn't good to start with and with these ladder line antennas you have three areas that you can adjust and one is the length of the ladder line uh, which we can adjust since we've already cut it. Uh, but we can adjust the length of the uh, element wire and the connection point. We started at two and a half inches and I raised it up about that far. And that brought the SWR down from 1.7 or 8 to 1.3 and then, then I adjusted a little bit more and came down to 1.2. So I think that's a wrap. I'm gonna I'm gonna solder this, and uh, a good thing to put on this after you solder is some of that li liquid electrical tape. I've got some. I won't bore you with that. I even got the wrong color. It's red. It makes a mess. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll solder that up, and we'll 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 recap this thing. Well, there you have it. The six meter J pole antenna. Roll this thing up and go find you a hilltop somewhere and have a ball with it. Uh, very easy to build. Uh, a good a good antenna plan to take to your club and uh, y'all get together and build one of these. They're a lot of fun. We've done the 10 meter and the 6 meter. Uh, a blast. If, uh, if you've got an analyzer, these things always help, especially way up high in the band. So uh, find somebody that's got a analyzer that'll help out with that and if you got something out of this video how about hitting that like and subscribe and uh, share it out with somebody share it out with anybody uh, hey let's build these antennas the uh, ARRL VHF contest is just not knocking on the door I think uh, second weekend in June we're in middle May second weekend in June I'll have this antenna on the hilltop maybe do another video on that so uh, hey appreciate you watching Y'all take care. For Ham Radio Portable, I'm Steve, 73.